This idea of owning something is challenging to an Indigenous ideology because we're all one people. We don't get it. We don't understand. That's it, simple. Walawani Ninjiwan, Buduri, the Bay of Plenty, welcome. This is our home country, our Galumban, special place for our family and extended family and community here in the southeast coast. It's a very beautiful place that's built on a very strong and ancient culture. Surveying comes back to the land, comes back to one of our most sacred things that we all live off and live from and return back to. When you've got an Indigenous value system that's laws and customs are based around a symbiotic relationship with living biodiversity to one that is somebody new that's coming into a landscape that doesn't really understand that biodiversity, that doesn't really understand or have a connection with that symbiotic relationship as a human and nature for this particular place. When that's broken, you've, that's where those two worldviews don't see eye to eye. The non-Indigenous titles that are bestowed upon people as landlords and the rights to country and the rights to own and sell is very much an established philosophy, very much based in a Western ideology around financial gain and, and financial stability. And that is growing in a nation like Australia because we haven't really got a large population. So in many ways, it's still a place of urban expansion on a global scale. So when you're talking about these surveying instruments and the tools of, of slicing up country and, and of, of ownership and delegation and, and the rights, it challenges the indigenous narratives that it doesn't belong to us, that we're the custodians. It challenges the foundations on which our cultures bound, the law of the land, the L-O-R-E. So a surveying chain is essentially a, a device to measure distances. They're made of wire and they've got a number of links so a chain is a standardised unit of measurement as well. So one chain is 66 feet. It's about 20.1168 metres. And it's about the width of a road reserve. A chain was divided into 100 links. So it was kind of a way of decimalising what was effectively imperial measurement. So a chain is 66 feet. There's 80 chains to a mile. Miles 5,280 feet. And so it was just a way that they would string this effectively long piece of wire, they get dragged through the bush across distances to measure how far apart things were. The Hallorans in the Shoalhaven, probably their relationship started I think in the early 1900s. Henry Halloran was a surveyor and a real estate developer as well. He acquired land right up and down the coast, a lot of it in the Shoalhaven, and he developed towns like Kalbara, Kalala, Vincentia, Huskisson, St George's Basin as well and kind of develop them more to like they are today. Henry had teams of surveyors that would traipse around his properties and would survey the land and they would then do land development subdivisions and sell the land off. So Henry Halloran had quite a reputation as being a town planner. So Henry had this love of planning, master planning subdivisions and he was quite a salesman. He would bring people down on trains down to this area, sometimes seaplanes too, I believe, to kind of get buyers into the area. And he would lend the money that people would have to make regular payments and things like that. So yeah, he was quite a marketing guru as well. Back in those days in the, the early 1900s, subdivisions aren't like what they are today. They would have been dirt roads. There probably were no services. It was really four pegs to mark out your block of land and you bought, bought it and off you went, built your house. The approvals and things weren't in place. You know, a modern subdivisions, um, power, water, you know, sealed roads, curb and gutter, but it would have been very different back then. But I think in those kind of wartime years, people just wanted somewhere to call home. 
and down here, they saw how beautiful it is. This idea of, of what builds a place, it's the values that you bring. Everybody's got to understand, as a human being, when you're sitting there and you're thinking about how to design a town, we've been here occupying this place for no less than 30,000 years in Jervis Bay, older sites here of that age. So when you think you're going to sit on some hill and you're the first person to do so and you're the first one that wanted to live there, you open the earth and it's full of midden, indicating very well that we were living there and our homes were there too. And of course everybody wants to live there. Look at the view. <laughs> I think there needs to be a recognition that we need to build this nation together. And it's when we come together and realise that it's something that belongs to all of us, this planet, not this country or this landscape, but this planet. That's where we've got to get to, planetary thinking because that's what's doing the damage. Mm -hmm.